93 days until the Bitcoin halving cycle. Family, we got this thing under 100 days. It's a lot to be excited about. We finally got a healthy correction and pullback. But I'm stuck on the fact that we're finally under 100 days. It's your boy Crypto Million back with another one. Today is Motivated Monday, not Mope Around Monday. Look at the fear and greed. It's right around that level we, we would want it to be around, right? 59. We want it to kind of stay out of the green. You know, just getting prepared uh, for the parabolic stage of the Bitcoin Alvin cycle. I would love to know everybody's opinion. Where do you think that we are in the psychological uh, uh, cycle of the crypto market? Are we in disbelief? Are we you, euphoric? Is, is Are we bearish? I want to know everybody's comments. It's still early in the morning. Bear with me, family. But I want to do a quick video before I start my day. I want a lot of people also to focus on um you know taking advantage of these red days right i don't see too many people as excited on these type of days as we see from uh the green candle days and i know you it can get you for it but at the end of the day these are the days that we fill our bags right we take advantage of our dips we compound our interest and we make our money work for itself and chasing green candles unfortunately just isn't a healthy strategy we finally got bitcoin here under 43k um at one point i was hoping it was going to go down to 38 because i know that was going to put a lot of buying pressure on all coins as a lot of people are getting prepared for the ethereum etf it seems to be the news it seems to be we preparing for another buy the rumor sell the news here with eth and i got a video that i want to share with you guys at the end of this video so stick around but i just want to go over the entire market i feel like the altcoin market um um, as the Bitcoin dominance goes down, we'll start to see a little bit of that liquidity pour into the altcoin market. I would also love to see the DXY here um, um, really, really go under 100. I mean, we really need the DXY to go under 100. I'm expecting us to get some type of news from the, uh, you know, excuse me, the, um, the Fed and the uh, uh, FOMC about a potential rate cut so just focus on some of the catalysts that we have at hand i know a lot of people thought like oh we got the bitcoin etf we're going straight to 100k unfortunately it doesn't work like that but there's still opportunity here in crypto and for the people that were on the sides a lot of new people on the sides watching this thing like a hawk wanting to be a part of what's going on in the crypto space well this is your opportunity to finally fill up your bags because at the end of the day when you see news like this coming out right family so during the recent market downturn, BlackRock has acquired a substantial um, 11,500 BTC. BlackRock has reportedly purchased an impressive 11,500 BTC during the latest dip, making a notable acquisition since the launch of its Bitcoin ETF. Now, this is, this is significant when considering that only 900 BTC are generated daily. So, BlackRock is buying more btc than it's being generated daily so there is the demand right there is the potential supply shock down the line and again if we see some explosive run from btc from here to maybe 150 200 000, a lot of these altcoins in the hottest narratives will go parabolic if you are interested in what altcoins that i am holding consider the free discord or the patreon so we got we got we, we got blackrock purchase effectively accounts for approximately 13 days worth of bitcoin being absorbed by one single entity and you can just imagine what the other entities are doing to compete with blackrock as everybody's working to be um the uh the um the uh, entity the centralized entity, entity should i say that holds the most bitcoin so what we what do we have to do how does this benefit us well if you are already in bitcoin if you're already in crypto this gives you a chance to front run those institutions putting you at you know an advantage or early movers advantage where we can see some pretty nice gains in the entire cryptocurrency market i'm pretty stoked at what's going on i'm not too concerned um from anything from the btc on the weekly chart i already told you guys that we were going to dump out we was extremely over bought on the weekly so the buy the rumor sell the news event i knew it was could have possibly happened but the thing is i just um the timing that i picked i said we were maybe going to crash into you know december going into january and then we see the pump but it, it didn't happen like that because a lot of people were expecting the bitcoin etfs well that 
correction, should I say, that we were um, assuming was going to happen because we've been hanging out here for a while is now happening in January. And you can tell by the stock RSI that we have clearly lost some momentum. As long as we don't dip back into the quicksand here, which is the uh, Gossin channel, we should be clear. We should be clear and we should be just correcting um, against this trend line um, that could put us somewhere around 38K to 48K before we see our next leg up to 50K. As soon as that altcoin dominance breaks down, I would expect some type of activity from the altcoins. Taking a look here at the ETH BTC pair, this shows you that ETH is ready to break out. ETH finally got a rejection on the ETH BTC. You can see that we put our buy zones down here, um, expecting ETH to top out right here at support. Um, it wicked down a little bit just to scare a little bit of people, but now has since rebounded and looking to finally enter the Gossin channel. So if the Gossin channel here turns green for the ETH BTC pair, I'm expecting explosive moves from the entire altcoin system and especially ERC20 tokens. So nothing to be afraid about, nothing to be like, oh, you know, is this the end of the pump? Are we going down from here? Stay focused, um, double down on your strategies, continue your research, and again, put yourself in a position to front run these VCs, institutions, and whales. Um, but I, um, I want to leave it off with this, man. I'm going to let my boy uh, uh, Larry Fink talk to you guys because, you know, this guy is one of the most wealthiest people. He runs one of the uh, biggest entities in the world when we're talking about investment entities. And he's extremely bullish on the cryptocurrency market. I do want to leave you guys with this video here from Larry Fink. Denied by the SEC. That's a fine. Meaning, meaning, let's just <clears throat> put a fine point on that. The industry, meaning companies like yours, Every asked the SEC to allow folks who might have owned shares via a grayscale to be able to transfer those in kind to a BlackRock and or then, to Fidelity and, or whomever. And so that there would be no tax ramifications. That was not denied. They wanted to really just create from scratch cash only, which we all respect the SEC's um, reasoning. Um, that creates an opportunity actually for, for Grayscale to keep those customers for a much longer time. It does, but I think over the long run, when you start adding up the fees and adding up the fees, uh, people are going to start thinking about um, redeeming and then ultimately going into an ETF. Longer term, do you now expect other cryptocurrency ETFs? Meaning, do you think that Gary, and we'll talk to him later, uh, Gary like Gensler Ethereum. Will, have, will have to approve an Ethereum yeah. ETF? And is that a function of something the SEC has to do, or do you think that all mm. these things have to go to court first? Mm. I couldn't respond to that. I, I, I see value in having an Ethereum ETF. As I said, these are just start stepping right. stones towards tokenization. And I, I really do believe this is where we're going to be going. We have the technology to tokenize today. If you want to talk about, think about this. If you had a tokenized right. a security and you have a tokenized identity, right. you, Andrew, the moment you buy or sell an instrument, it is known. It's an, on a general ledger right. that is all created together. Um, you want to talk about m issues around money laundry and all that. This eliminates all corruption by having right. a tokenized system. Jamie Dimon disagrees with you on that, but, yeah. uh, or at least to some degree. Let me ask you uh, this before we let you go, which is there has been a massive backlash, as you know, around ESG. You have said that the phrase ESG. Mm -hmm. Well, enough from Larry Fink. I really am not here for his ESG comment, but just to you know, show you guys how bullish he is on the tokenization of, of, of the stock market, right? Um, we know how huge the stock market is and just imagine once it becomes tokenized and how big the cryptocurrency market is so this is larry fink himself saying hey an eth etf is on the way so for all the people i mean this got to be the easiest trade in america because the same thing happened when he said the btc ET, etf was on the way beast a bitcoin went from 15k to literally 48k so my question is to you guys how, how do you think eth will go from here will eth go from 2500 to 5k i want to know everybody's opinion and are you prepared for an eth buy the rumor sell the news headed into the bitcoin housing potential fed cuts and even an election season it seems like larry fink is paving the way for an explosion from ethereum and erc20 tokens and if you're into you know your favorite narratives memes layer ones ai gaming this might be the time to start 
strategizing and um, putting together a plan to front run these VCs and entities. Y'all let me know what y'all think about Larry Fink, ETH, ETF. It's your boy Crypto Millie. I'll see you in the next one.